Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Tiffany Harlick and my friend and colleague and special guest April is with us today and I'm so excited to host April because she is going to be doing some Akashic Record readings and Tarot readings and some intuitive readings back at TiffanyHarlick.com. So we're hosting her this season and thank you April for being here again. I'm so excited to see your beautiful face and your cute haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I love it. I love uh, I'm I'm really enjoying this little October series that has been going on. Um, so if you guys are here on the podcast or on the YouTube, it's probably because you're into astrology or beekeeping or psychic development. And as part of that, uh, this little Halloween special for October of 2023, I've been asking some of my friends to come back on and talk about their specialties in uh, in this kind of witchy or witch adjacent season. <laughs> so I saw you write on one of your posts. Um, yeah, if you identify as witch adjacent, or um, I think maybe witch curious or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cute. I like the way that you worded it. Yeah. So, um, so April, I, uh, when April is doing Akashic Record readings, this is something that you might want to explore if you are into your psychic development, if you're, it is one avenue that you could explore uh, as you're developing your gifts. And so I thought we could start just by talking a little bit about the records, a little a bit about the thinning of the veil this time of the season, and then April is going to do a special reading for us. So yeah. if we could just uh, start from the top, um, I, I have some articles we can link to, but just in your words, what are the Akashic records and how do you access them? Yeah, so the Akashic records is an interesting um, concept that I feel like is really widely misunderstood. And I think sometimes in the metaphysical kind of universe, um, things that developed maybe in a past time period or are associated with kind of outdated thought patterns can get a little weird and they kind of kind of creep people out. Um, and I feel like the Akashic Records is one of those things that is under, um, undervalued and underappreciated and not really well understood. And so I love um, just teaching about it because in my mind, it's one of the most powerful ways to do psychic readings and to do psychic work. I have huge breakthrough experiences with my clients when I do readings. And um, so I think they're worth investigating and learning about um, what they are. So if you can imagine, I love using quantum mechanics and um, concepts of quantum physics to kind of explain the unexplainable um, because we know that not everything in science is even explainable by science. So there are contradictions and paradoxes within science. Same thing in our physical reality and the way that we interact with the world. One of those concepts is just the fact that energy is never created nor destroyed. It has always existed since the beginning of energy. And so your energy, Tiffany Harlick and mine, um, has always existed. And so the, the cells and the molecules and the literal magnetic forces that make up our bodies, that energy has always been in existence and it has a history, it has a story. And so we are physical beings in a physical world on a physical plane. We cannot in our physical bodies contain the full history and in, in memory fully in our conscious mind. It's too much for us to hold in our brain. So the records is, is kind of this way of describing where all of that data is stored. And a lot of people liken it to a metaphysical library. Mm -hmm. I think that's totally a valid analogy. I also like to think of it as um, an external hard drive. And when you get a reading from me, I service that cord, that USB that's hooking up to you, the computer, and plugging you into your external hard drive where you can access the full records, all of your data that exists. That's the story of you. That's your history. That's your past lives. It's your ancestors. It's your lineage. All of the things that make you special. And um, when I open the records, that's what we're accessing. And so I think the other thing that can be overwhelming with the records is there's not really a roadmap or framework for what to ask and how to interact with them. It's, a, it's kind of a blank slate and that can be overwhelming. Like, how do I ask the right question? How do I even know what I want to, what I don't know? Um, how do I find um, 
find the things to focus on and pull those forward. And I just want to say um, to that kind of freak out that people typically have, that's why you have me. That's why you have a guide who's experienced, who can help you and direct you. But also um, it's really important to just kind of open yourself up to what the universe wants to bring forward. And I think the universe is so kind and loving and caring spirit will bring forward then things you need to know in that moment. So I will do readings, multiple readings for multiple people and um, or like the same people again and again. And we uncover new things every time we cover new territory. Sometimes we revisit and we remind because it's good to re be reminded of who you are and what is always true. But we go on these just kind of incredible adventures together and storytell and uncover and unpack um, whatever's going on that, that you need to know about. And so that's what I do in my readings. And that kind of encapsulates the records in a nutshell. But if you have any follow-up questions, I'm happy to dig in deeper. No, this is perfect. So um, a, a couple of things that are coming to mind for me, um, when you're when you're describing them as a metaphysical library, uh, this is kind of a, a cheesy uh, <laughs> admission on my part. But I, have I told you before that I think of them and I'm y'all I am not like, like, I'm not this total Disney queen girl. I'm really not but I seem to have some Disney references that help me with these type of concepts. And this is one of the areas and I think of uh, the Little Mermaid. <laughs> And she's yes, and she's got all these trinkets and stuff in her big tunnel. Like that's what I think the Akashic Records are. Yeah, look at the stuff. Isn't it neat? I mean, it is neat. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, a total exploration of all these things that you have. You have a treasure trove, um, yeah. and we can like uncover all the different things that you have that you're probably not even aware of. One one of my favorite readings that you have given me over the years was. Uh, it was interesting, you know, it was about the land, uh, mm -hmm. our family property. And so you think about wanting to get a reading, like a lot of times we're getting readings because our hair is on fire. We're not sure what decision to make. We're not accessing our human design. We don't understand the astrology and we just need some quick help. Like we need burning yes. question help. And so the Akashic records are great for that. However, there's also sometimes when we have questions and we just want more information about the layers of the history of a space. And so you really brought a lot of insight to me when you were reading um, about our land. And I still think about some of the characters that popped up and I still, um, you know, I guess welcome them in when I'm blessing the land and doing things like my gardening and my bees out there. So very valuable. That's awesome. Yeah. It, yes. So in many yeah, ways, the, like property is one thing that we can look at. And if you own the property, you, you have, you are entitled to access the history of that piece of property. And so I always love hearing um, feedback later, like maybe a guide comes forward or you meet, um, you meet someone, part of your cosmic team or an ancestor during a reading. And then what will typically happen is they'll show up later in your life. And I don't always get to loop back with people and hear that follow-up. So I always love it when it does happen and I get to hear, oh yeah, I'm working with that energy now. And it's like, ah, oh, that's so good because they they were able to finally access that when the veil was thinner. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that with the Akashic Records, I'm basically walking people through that veil. And mm -hmm. so I love, it's perfect um, time of year to talk about how energy and the natural thinning um, and just seasonal shifts, how that can create even more impactful opportunities to work with the energy, work with spirit and encounter things that maybe you didn't know before. Yes, true. So I love, I, this is kind of a segue into a question that I've been asking everyone, which is, is the veil really thinner right now? And I think about a lot of people have had the sim a similar answer and what I think about is the mists of Avalon. Did you read that book? Oh, I maybe, but a long time ago. A long time ago. I only got through part of it. And I, I need like a summer to read that much, you know? So absolutely. Um, I, I do the reason it came to mind is because I was looking at your pre-show notes and talking about kind of Celtic culture. And I thought you could talk about like, you know, the mists in terms of the Celtic culture and also just the mists and the, the thinning of the veil and what, what the veil even is, right? From your perspective. Yeah, yeah. So I was, um, I've had a lot of thoughts around kind of like what the veil is. And um, I wanted to interrogate my own 
preconceived notions. So I did a lot of research. And as I was looking around, um, what kind of themes that came forward in a lot of different articles from a lot of different people and a lot of different thinkers in this space um, is that the veil kind of represents this consciousness, this collective consciousness. And it's, it's a invisible barrier that keeps the spirit world or at least one dimension, I'll say it this way, it separates dimensions, right? And the dimension that we're typically separated from is that of um, people people that have passed, it's um, loved ones, it's history, it's past lives, it's all of this stuff that we, in our reality, um, we can't feel, see, touch all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I love thinking about um, this concept of ideas will cross the veil, and then it permeates our collective consciousness. And it's like we all, as a, as a collective, as um, people across the globe will have revelations and visions of things at the same time. So you'll see this throughout history. Scientific discoveries will happen. Someone in France will discover the thing that someone in Norway is discovering that they're discovering in Africa and that they're discovering in the United States all at the same time. Like it, it's almost as if there are downloads that come through when we need them. And so things are passing back and forth all the time. The obvious passing that we do is when we when we die, we cross over and go and and we go into spirit. And so, um, what the Celts really captured, and I think this is so true around just thinking about the season. So your your original question is the veil actually thinner? Um, we've talked about this concept of duality, and you know, light can be perceived as a particle or a wave. It's both, it depends on how you are conducting the experiment. And so there is kind of an element of, we all think it's thinner, so therefore it becomes thinner um, because we are powerful and our thoughts and our beliefs can yep. create reality, right? Yep. Um, we co-create with the universe um, yep. with our thoughts and our attitudes and our belief and our energy. But I also think that the Celts were onto something when we start shifting from daylight being the predominant marker to night being the predominant marker, we are literally changing the way that we engage in the world. Um, plants go to sleep. We are in a season of rest. We need to hibernate. We need to come inward. And so I think there is something about the timing of the season and obviously seasonal shifts. I'm speaking more Northern hemisphere than Southern hemisphere, but it's the same. We're crossing from one to the other, from going from day to night or night to day. And um, within that, the Celts built religion around it in um, some Wayne or some win, depending on how you kind of pronounce right. it. <laughs> Halloween, the original Halloween is a pagan holiday to celebrate and honor the dead and the spirits. And it's also a way to protect. They would all put together offerings. They would have bonfires. They would do this thing called mummying or mumming, which is dressing up and and go door to door and exchange food for different things. And so trick-or-treating is an ancient custom that we have embodied in modern culture. And I love when things that are ancient and old still have relevance and meaning today, because to me, that shows there is some baseline of truth mm -hmm. um, because we wouldn't do it anymore if it didn't have meaning, if it didn't have value, but we still maintain some of these traditions today. So yes, I believe the veil is thinner. Um, I also believe it's with eclipse season and everything else going on, um, coming into eventually we'll get to the winter solstice in December. All of these energies make for a great time to access records, to do readings, to go inward and reflect. That's what the season is about. It's about reflecting inward and being less available to the outside world, more available to yourself. So that's mm -hmm. how I see it. I think that's my favorite answer so far. And <laughs> so many ideas are going off right now because you explained it from two very practical, realistic views. Um, but the thing when you're talking about like we shift our point from like our, our day reference to our night reference, because like you said, at least here in Texas, <laughs> the, northern mm -hmm. Texas, the, the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer. And I love this parallel because it's also a nice honeybee reference, right? The honeybees as winter solstice starts here and the days 
the, the sun light is increasing, they're expanding, they're getting brighter, they're more active. And then as the sunlight decreases and we shift from day to night, there is this song of decrease. And so there is this time of expansion and contraction that's in the natural world, in our gardens, in our flora and fauna, and then also in our heart and our minds and our souls of this natural inward reflection period. So, um, you know, the that's veil, exactly right. Right. Like the, the veil of consciousness is really what we're talking about. Right. And the veil of consciousness, it, to me, it's between what we are aware of and what we are not aware of. And so it's always funny to talk of like on these metaphysical conversations about talking about subconscious because you don't know what you don't know. You know, there's, exactly. <laughs> there's no way that anybody can actually work with the, the subconscious. But yet we try to and we try to mm -hmm. kind of excavate and dig things up. And so this time when the veil is a little bit more thin um, is a way that, you know, is, is a time that we could access some of those things. So especially you absolutely know, it's season right now. So we have these eclipses that do expose darkness, bringing it into the light. And so that's another, I guess, way of looking at it. Um, cool. So I had a lot of ideas. That was the one that came out when you were talking. No, I love it. Yeah. Um, I, and I think just, it's important to note um, that it's not something that has to feel like so esoteric, so hard to understand or wrap your head around. I think um, the best way to think about it is, you know what, you, you don't know what you don't know. And when I feel like I'm spinning and I'm overthinking and I'm in analysis paralysis, I'm like, I need to just stop, open the records and see what comes through. It's a way of very practically helping you focus on what is most important. And sometimes with everything that we carry in life, um, it's hard to know where to put my energy right now. What is the most important thing for me to do? What do I need to feel? Where do I need to invest my time, my energy, my resources, my money? Um, and that's something that you can get in the records. I open the records all the time for big things and small things, for big life decisions and I don't know what I, I can't even like come up with something to eat today. What sounds good? And I'll open the records and like see if recipes come up. You know, it's, it can be very simple and fun and playful. It doesn't have to feel like this big daunting, heavy, like, oh, crossing the veil. Um, even though that is very much a part of it. It's, it's also just, it's, it's there for you to support you in whatever way you need. Mm -hmm. And it, you can access it any time of the year. It's any time. Like right now. But Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, do you have any Halloween stories that you want to share? Mm, Halloween stories. I don't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. Like yeah, no, okay. So one of the things we talked about doing was a Halloween reading. And one way that you have done this in the past is just to open the records for the collective and the collective would be, would mean in this case, anybody that's listening to this show, listening to this podcast that has a question that they want answered. And so is that how you're wanting to do the reading today? Are you thinking like a collective level reading? Yeah. So I was thinking we could do collective level or we could do you specifically. Um, um, just always an option if you're open. Um, or like, yeah, if you have, I think general collective, like if you want to focus it on, you know, the, just the listeners of the podcast, um, we've done that many times and that seems to work really well. Let's do it. So did you want to do the records or did you want to do cards? I might've just thrown you into that. No, no, I think we should do records. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, all right, well, let's shift gears. And uh, April has an opening prayer that she uses. And so she'll do that. And then, so anybody listening that would like a reading that would like to tap into this, um, April will be doing that just for all of us as a whole. And so if this is not for you and you're not interested, this is a great time to just hit pause, go make yourself a cup of tea. And, um, and this is just, you know, we're asking permission for anybody listening that really, really wants a reading. That's who we're going to be opening it for. And maybe there's some spicy juiciness for Tiffany too. <laughs> I feel like spiciness and juiciness will come forward. Okay. So <laughs> we're just going to take um, a centering breath. Um, if you'll join me, just breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just take notice of 
any tension or stress or worry that you're holding in your body. And as you're continuing to breathe, just try to release that, letting it all go. And as we move to opening the records, just receiving warm golden light beaming down from above and it's just washing our bodies in a beautiful golden light that is warm and safe and comforting. Just inviting that in, inviting in a sense of safety. So we gather together in light, we gather together in love, we gather together in knowing the messages from above. Through the Akashic Records, we understand our greatness. Through the Akashic Records, we understand our wisdom. Through the Akashic Records, we understand what's there. This prayer will help deliver us there. I wish to know the listeners of this podcast through the light of the Akashic Records. Help me to see the listeners of this podcast through the light of the Akashic Records. Bring me to feel the listeners of this podcast through the light of the Akashic Records. I wish to know the listeners of this podcast through the light of the Akashic Records. Help me to see the listeners of this podcast through the light of the Akashic Records. Bring me to feel the listeners of this podcast through the light of the Akashic Records. And now the records are open. So very often um, dynamics that are going on in the world um, impact us as individuals, just as they impact us as communities and as nations. And so first thing that comes forward is a message around safety. I was getting that before I opened the records that everyone here, um, just you are in a container of safety. This is a sacred and safe space where you can explore and be curious we are um, putting just protective boundaries around every listener in this moment and understanding simultaneously that there are many people throughout the world that do not feel safe right now, that there are politics and militaries and governments and dynamics at play in this moment that are causing people to feel unsafe. And this has been true and it will hopefully not, but has the potential to always be true. Um, and we just recognize that. We recognize that there are forces in this world that do not serve unconditional love, that don't serve unconditional light. But here in this space today, we do. And we, we are committed to being for each other, to upholding each other's highest good, and to inviting the energy that supports our highest and best good. We invite that forward. And so as we receive messages today, I'm just establishing that as a baseline. So just asking to breathe through that feeling, any feelings of disruption, of dysregulation, of fear, of concern. We're just putting that to the side for this moment so that we can truly hear what spirit has for us. Yeah, so a lot of people feel that Halloween is about a time of being afraid or it's spooky, it's spooky season, right? It's all of these things that feel um, maybe it's like the time that horror movies come out in the theaters and but I am saying, and what is coming forward is that this is a time not for fear, but for dis self-discovery, for uncovering shadow and bringing things into the light so that we don't have to be afraid anymore. We can receive messages from the other side in a way that feels safe and secure and powerful. I'm thinking about transits related to Pluto and about eclipses and how um, when the moon is over the sun or vice versa, we're blocking out light um, or there's, there's some kind of barrier, but it's also opening and it's creating the space for new energy to come through and that change and disruption 
and discovering the shadow sides of things are so incredibly important for our own healing. You can't have the sun without the moon. You can't live in this world without dual energy. We need the night just as much as we need the day, but we do not have to fear the darkness. We do not have to fear the darkness. You do not have to be afraid of the dark or this season of hibernation and um, introvertedness and self-reflection. It's actually a season that prepares us to then step in the light again. And when we do step in the light again, we will be more healthy, healed, whole, capable, strong. All of this work that we do in the winter, in the fall and the winter, paves the path for the spring and the summer. We can't have one without the other. So just wanting to give that gift of perspective today to this audience. I also um, know that this audience is highly engaged and aware. And I see this community virtually and almost just in our minds, um, holding hands with one another, creating a circle and saying we're holding space for um, and we are receiving downloads. I think this community, these listeners are all people that are opening their hands and saying, I want to receive these messages so that I can be better and that I can impact my community and I can be a light bearer and um, show that way to others. And so this is not a community of um, people who are asleep or um, unaware. This is a very aware and awake group. And so I just wanna honor that and thank you. Um, Whoever's listening, you are someone who, if you're listening to this, you are aware, you are awake. Um, Just by pressing play on this podcast, you are already doing yourself a favor and doing your community a favor. And so I'm just gonna honor that and say, if you are willing, you will receive. These messages are crossing this veil. They are crossing this threshold. And we all just need to be in a stance of receiving. It's a time of getting quiet, journaling, and hearing your own inner voice and inner knowing. Um, You have the power to access these messages, you yourself as an individual, and we can also do that as a community. So yes to receiving, yes to being aware, yes to being awake. And then from there, we can start doing the work. So I see this as the next three months as being incredibly, an incredibly powerful time to collect information, to um, write things down, to relearn, to re-understand, to remember. Um, I love this aspect of remembering during this season, remembering loved ones that passed. We honor, we honor um, this, we honor them on All Saints Day, Day of the Dead, um, Dia de los Muertos. There's so many different communities and cultures that have history and legacy and rituals in place for you to partner with that work. So yes, we remember the past so that we can move forward stronger and better in the future. So working with ancestors, building an altar, um, just inviting you to partner with that energy and to learn from it so that you can grow and be um, in a better place come January, February and beyond. I'm also seeing money is a hot topic for people. There's economic uncertainty. There's been um, economic hardship and inflation and all these things that are going on. You have the power to manifest abundance in any season and in any economy. And I want everyone to remember that. Remember the truth that money is energy and abundance is something we can create. We create it with our, with our beliefs, with our thoughts, with our, um, with our ability to interact with others. If you are feeling um, in lack, then that's, that's something that we can work on. That's something that you can shift. And this abundance message is here today. I see it like a, a wrapped gift just coming down and I see it's a gold box with a red bow, just like a classic, beautifully wrapped, wrapped gift. And I see us unboxing it. And out of that is just this overflow of energy and it's all around abundance. And so if you put out your hands and receive that gift today, I think some things are gonna be unlocked for you. If you're not sure how that looks for you, get quiet, get some time, journal. There is a message for you specifically and that will come through. And I know that because I've seen it so many times. 
And um, so spirit wants that to come forward. And there are unique individual ways that um, spirit wants to impart this gift to you. So just ask and you shall receive it. Um, so, okay, just pivoting now, asking if there's anything else that really needs to come through in this season for this audience, for this community. Actually, what's coming forward now is just look to Tiffany. <laughs> she is um, a pioneer and a trailblazer. And what she's doing is in alignment with the energy. So emulate and look at people like her, look at other teachers that you respect, look at their life, look at the fruit of their work. Tiffany is so abundant because she invests in people and in systems and in processes and in ideas. And those things pay off because she is so wholehearted and so invested. If you want a path toward abundance, look at how she has invested in herself and in the people that matter and in the systems and tools that matter that produce um, that, that she can reap those benefits tenfold. And that is what she's doing. This is her, she is on her own journey, but she is definitely a standard bearer and a pioneer and a marker. Emulate her, look at people like her, look at the results. It's not about what people promise. It's about how you feel when you're with them. It's about how you feel when you read their articles, when you get readings from them, how do they make you feel? How um, do you connect with their energy? When you find people like that, you know, they are creating their own path, they're trailblazing. And so it's really powerful to tap into that and to um, honor what they're doing and find your own way within that. A lot of times we, we use the term expanders. We have people in our world that expand our own consciousness and, and help us believe that things are possible. So find those expanders. Um, they always pave the path toward abundance. Um, yes, okay. Just asking if there's anything else. Just gratitude. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna honor the, the records for being a source of wisdom and truth. I'm gonna honor Tiffany for creating space for this moment and for these messages on her podcast. And I just give myself gratitude for serving as the channel. Records are now closed, amen. The records are now closed, amen. The records are now closed, amen. Amen. That was some flow. Was so good. <laughs> I was like, she's going, she's in it. It's still happening. The messages are coming. It's so beautiful. So obviously the first thing everybody needs to say is thank you, April. What an awesome. Oh, thing. Thank you. And oh yeah. It's, and that's how it goes. It's just flow. I mean, it's just energy. And I love being on that wave. I love riding that wave. It feels so good. So timely. And so, um, my, um, daughter is texting in this moment so I had to respond I uh, <laughs> I'm oh, wondering nice. if you'll tell some of the listeners to so a lot of when you're trained in psychic development one of the things one of the strategies is to keep your eyes open and I see a lot of Akashic record readers with their eyes closed and what that does I believe is shut off one of the sensory you know information inputs and it really kind of takes you to another place in time and, and space and reality. And so I'm watching you in your flow and I'm like, she has no idea that she's like, the minutes are stacking up. She's in her other time and space and her other continuum. And so I wonder if you could speak a little bit about how you experience the information. Are you seeing it? Are you feeling it? Are you tasting it? What's happening? That's such a good question. And I'm so glad you asked mm -hmm. because I think that is a huge part of it. So you're right. I literally, I feel transported outside of time and space. I have no idea how much time that took. It could have been 30 seconds. That could have been 15 minutes. I literally have no concept. Um, and so I shut my eyes because you're right. It shuts down. What I don't want to do is get in my head. I want to get out of my head and be completely available for what's coming in. So I don't want to look at your face and see a reaction and change what I'm thinking. I don't want something to pop up on my screen. I don't want to get distracted. I want to just be in that flow. And so by shutting my eyes, it helps me personally access that. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of readers um, who've done Akashic Records on me say like they don't want to see me at all because they don't want any kind of, they don't want to get confused. They just want to feel the energy. And yeah. so it helps me um, 
feel. And so how I experience is that I feel things in my body. It's all the other senses are activated. Mm-hmm. My hearing, um, I get downloads in my head, like specific, almost like intrusive thoughts that mm-hmm. just like insert themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, I also will reference, it's funny that you mentioned like, you're not super into Disney. I will have references from movies, songs, books I've read that come forward. And sometimes I've, in the past, I used to question it. Like, am I just like making this up? Like I, I know I've read this book. So why is that coming forward? Is that me? But it's not, it's a way to illustrate and explain what's happening. So using examples like a visual, like the little mermaid and the treasure trove that she has, it's a really tangible way for people to understand the message that they're getting. And I find that to be very practical and helpful. So I will oftentimes reference things, um, song lyrics, like I said, um, film references, characters, fictional characters um, to represent energy because we're, you, we are, we only have um, what's available to us. And I feel like everything that is available to us, everything that we have learned is valuable and should be brought in. So um, I do taste things not as often. Taste is probably my weaker sense in terms of what I access in the records, but I will hear, I will actually have visions. That's a big one. And then um, like sense of, of knowing bodily sensations, um, pain, or euphoria, I'll cry, mm-hmm. um, I'll connect with emotion that other people are feeling. So all of it is kind of on the table. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's see, what else can I say? The you're talking about like discerning your thoughts versus spirit, the thoughts that spirit gives you. And, and I'll say in my experience, it you can tell a difference because the thought happens before the question has even been fully formed, like it's kind of answered quickly. Exactly. Uh, my friend sent me this podcast today, Maggie, she's going to be on the podcast later doing Halloween nice. colors. And, um, but she sent me this podcast. It was called personal will versus God's will. And how can I know the difference? And I, it's, it's from the Tommy Rosen and the circle podcast. And anyways, I thought it was great because it, it explains from a different realm of knowing my will versus God's will, knowing my thoughts versus the thoughts that come in. And so that's another resource if anybody's uh, really trying to have some discernment and some discipline, right? They, in terms of discipline, um, doing your spiritual practices is a discipline and discipline comes from the word disciple, which is really about studying, right? And really about studying something. And so I love that you brought in the wave versus the particle and that whole viewpoint was very scholarly and much appreciated. And you totally opened my eyes and mind to looking at it from a different perspective today. So um, so thank you, April. And if you guys would like a personalized reading, again, April will be here this season with us at tiffanyharlick.com. Uh, her rates are so reasonable. You should totally snatch one up for yourself or get a gift certificate. Um, and anything else that we have not covered? We wanted to- No, I, I'm just excited to, um, to serve the community in this way. And, um, and maybe revisit some people that I've, I've met with in the past. Yeah, and, yeah. and there, like Tiffany mentioned, there are articles. I did a, a YouTube tutorial on how to read the records for yourself. Mm-hmm. So if you um, want to learn, not only if you want to access a reading through me, I would love that, but also feel empowered to investigate on your own and be that disciple. If this feels like an energetic you want to play with, um, mm-hmm. full permission to explore it. Okay, so that's the last point I wanted to make. So that, what you're talking about is Chiron and Aries. So Chiron in Aries, do it yourself healing, do it yourself spirituality, do it yourself, get the tools, learn astrology, learn Akashic records, don't consult the psychic, be one, right? Yes, yes. Be one, but it's also nice to have the guide as you're starting out. And so that I'm glad we got here because one of the things that you brought up in the records is very much touching on some of the astrology for 2024. Um, as we're moving, it, like Uranus is in Taurus and Jupiter is in Taurus and Jupiter is kind of catching up. So one of the big astrological markers of 2024 is uh, Jupiter connecting with, kissing, holding hands with Tor- uh, with Uranus in Taurus. 
And so I think that some of this, these bigger media things around aliens and encounters that are happening, I think some of the bigger expanding, like the thought expansion, um, and I think some of the supply chain breakup, because tourists rules food and finances, and uh, having some of the fear around prosperity, all of the things you talked about really do match very interestingly um, with the 2024 astrology. So wow. you can trust April because I'm validating <laughs> that what you're saying is absolutely part of the cosmic tapestry of next year. Um, Celeste, Sarah, and I are going to do a 2024 preview on 11.11. So if you're interested in our annual event, please come back, check it out. And I'll make sure to link uh, April's articles, handouts, and videos wherever you're listening. So good morning, good evening, good night. And thank you again, April. I'm so happy to see you again and happy to have you back and just really appreciate you. Thank you, Tiffany. I love you so much. You're the best. Oh, I love you too. Okay. So it takes me a while to find the stop button without ending the um, meeting. <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. Are you, um, I mean, 